Hedgehog Express. Let's kick this dump. Commonly known as Sonic Sat AM, Sonic the Hedgehog has many characters that are literally at war with one another. Who's a freedom fighter, who opposes them, and who might fall in between? I'm Andrew with Wicked Binge, and this is Sonic Sat AM Characters Good to Evil. Before we get started, here's a few notes to help you follow along. For this list, we will be focusing on the events that happened in the show only. And while this is a 30 year old series, we still have to say there's going to be spoilers. Just a quick heads up. You don't have to remind me! As usual, we'll be starting off with the most noble characters and working our way down to the evil ones. These characters are the good. Right off the bat, we have a tie for the gold medal of heroism. It's going to be going to both Sonic the Hedgehog and Princess Sally. In the case of Sonic, it is true that he is a bit cocky, very impatient, and doesn't always think things through before he charges into action. Despite this, however, he still is very much on the side of good, and he will do whatever it takes to save the day. This is regardless of any possible risk to himself in the process. Multiple times throughout the show, Sonic runs back into the heart of Robotropolis, sometimes encountering Robotnik directly just to save one person from being captured and roboticized. Give it up, Robotnik. If it weren't for his super speed and the occasional power ring, many of these missions would likely have resulted in him sacrificing himself to save another. Even with these gifts, there are still multiple instances where he is in trouble and someone else has to save him. He also acts as a good mentor and an older brother to Tails, so he gets some extra points for that. Whether it be a standard rescue mission or one where his own life is at risk, Sonic stops at nothing to save the world. Thankfully, he's not the only one leading the charge. Princess Sally is often working alongside Sonic, leading the charge to prevent the world from becoming roboticized and bringing the green back to the forest. What truly is admirable about her is what she does despite her stature. Being a princess alone puts her in a position of power where she could technically stay out of the battle and let others fight while she gives the orders. However, she doesn't take advantage of that. Instead, she is almost always on the front lines, often putting herself in risky scenarios to save her people alongside Sonic and the others. It is also very clear that, even off the battlefield, Sally cares about her friends and does what she can to help them with their problems. A highly noteworthy one comes with Sonic. I have the old plan. The first time Sonic encounters Uncle Chuck after he has been roboticized, he wants to immediately find some way to snap him out of his mind wipe state and bring him back home. Unfortunately, his first attempt only works temporarily and he is forced to leave his beloved uncle behind. Sally sees how crushed Sonic is, which is a rarity for him and goes to comfort him. She then reassures him that they will find a way to save his uncle at some point. Their support for each other, as well as all the others fighting against Robotnik, are a great source of inspiration as they continue to go up against increasingly difficult odds. For our Silver Medal of Good, we are going to be giving it to another hedgehog present in the series, Uncle Chuck. While it is true that he was working for Robotnik early on in the show, it was never of his own free will. When he could think on his own, he immediately stepped into action to stop Robotnik's plan. Plans. He willingly puts himself in a very risky situation on a regular basis, often acting as a spy and working inside the walls of Robotnik's fortress to help the Freedom Fighters gain valuable information. Near the end of the series, he is almost caught by Snively. Despite the increased risk afterwards, he continues working as he has been. At one point, he actually is caught, and he is almost brainwashed into working for Robotnik again before he is rescued at the last second. Despite this happening, Chuck still willingly puts himself in a dangerous situation on a constant basis for the benefit of the Freedom Fighters and their cause. You should have seen your faces. Chuck should also be acknowledged for creating the Roboticizer. Yes, it is often seen in a negative light. However, its original intended use was far more benign. Chuck invented the Roboticizer for medical reasons, hoping to cure diseases and repair injured body parts by making them mechanical. Unfortunately, Robotnik stole this technology and twisted it for his own evil intentions. Thankfully, Chuck wasn't involved in that last part. When his free will was intact, he did everything he could to stop this evil and reverse the negative effects of a machine that he had made originally with a pure purpose. Let's hope we see more of him in the future. Our bronze medal of good is going to be split up across most of the other freedom fighters. There is a reason why we say most here, but we will get to that in a little bit. For now, a few of the characters that are here include, but aren't limited to, the likes of Tails, Bunny Rabot, Rotor, Dulcie the Dragon, Lupe, and Nicole. In the case of Tails, he is a younger boy and doesn't get to be a part of a lot of the action, even though he really wants to be. However, he is sometimes seen being trained so that he can be ready to join the fight when his time comes. He doesn't give up, and his persistence eventually pays off. By the end of the series, Tails is officially dubbed a freedom fighter, and he even joins Sonic on a crucial mission. Whoa! That's awesome! 
Bunny is also a unique case. Her body has been partially roboticized, but her free will is still intact. As a result, she is able to use her roboticized parts to her and the team's advantage. She still wants her own full body back, of course, but she makes the most of the situation and uses Robotnik's own technology against him. With Tails being as young and inexperienced as he is here, someone else has to fill the role of technical genius. That's where Rotor comes in. He occasionally gets a chance to help on the front lines. Otherwise, he's usually behind the scenes, inventing or repairing things that can benefit the Freedom Fighters or sabotage Robotnik and his plans. He states at one point, after saving everybody with him on a mission, that he actually prefers to save further back. Considering this is where his skills are most needed, we commend him for this. When it comes to Dulcie, we don't see much of her until the back half of the series, but when she does finally start showing up, it's quite frequently. Being a dragon with many powerful abilities, she uses all of her skills in very effective ways to fight Robotnik and his armies. She even goes out of her way to rescue a dragon egg that isn't even hers. We also give her kudos for being the Freedom Fighter's aerial support in many missions, even though it's likely that Robotnik can usually detect her presence from miles away. She proves time and time again that she is a valuable asset to the team. Now, if only she could stick that landing more consistently. Music to my ears. Lupe is in a similar boat to Dulcie in that she doesn't really get a lot of screen time until much later in the show. When we finally do meet her, it turns out she is the leader of her own team of Freedom Fighters, making her motivations and intentions clear in all the right ways. Our last Freedom Fighter we will address for now is Nicole. Granted, Nicole isn't a living being like everyone else, but it is evident that she can still think, feel, and act in similar ways to them. Nicole is almost always with Sally, helping her with various tasks. She is able to hack just about anything, display maps of enemy territory, and give valuable information based on things she already knows about. Towards the end of the series, she even works with Sonic to a degree. It took a little bit of time for them to get used to each other, but they still work together well, and she helped him accomplish his missions in the end. As a collective group, the Freedom Fighters keep pushing forward, even when the odds are stacked against them. Let freedom ring, Freedom Fighters. Let freedom ring. Our final character in the good category is another resident from Knothole Village and a Freedom Fighter, Antoine. Antoine is the reason why we said most of the Freedom Fighters earlier. Antoine is still very much a Freedom Fighter, so he certainly couldn't be evil or even in the gray category. That being said, he has just enough problems to keep him out of being in the previous entry. He is kind of like the Jar Jar Binks of the Freedom Fighters. He is often the comic relief, usually unintentionally, and he routinely winds up getting himself or the others into trouble. Multiple times during the show, his cowardice, arrogance, or occasional clumsiness result in a mission he is a part of being either almost or completely jeopardized. I am sinking in these very much of the work. Most of the other characters are very much annoyed whenever he is around and up to his typical antics. We also want to bring to attention two specific moments with him. One comes from an episode with a title that perfectly reflects many people's thoughts on him. Fed up with Antoine, a biker gang shows up at one point and treats him like a king at first, and he quickly lets it go to his head. He starts treating other people, like Sonic, quite differently. Only when he finally realizes the gang's true intentions does he come back to his senses. The other incident comes from the episode hooked on Sonics. After seeing that Sally is more interested in Sonic than him, Antoine slips into a depressed state. What does that fuel have that I do not? Later, he is seen talking to Rotor, who points out that it would take a major act to get Sally's attention. Despite Rotor clearly joking about capturing Robotnik to do that, Antoine takes that idea a little too seriously. He then sneaks a power ring, entices Robotnik with it, and tries to trap him in a pit. To pretty much no one's surprise, this backfires. Antoine is captured, and Robotnik now has a power ring to use against Sonic. He may have been trying to succeed in one of the most noble acts in the show, but he was only doing it to impress Princess Sally, and ultimately cause more problems than anything else. We will actually be jumping right over the gray area and into the characters that oppose the Freedom Fighters or who otherwise had bad intentions. These are the evil characters. Receiving the Bronze Medal of Evil is Robotnik's nephew and lackey, Snively. With him being Robotnik's second in command, you know he's going to cause trouble at some point. Snively mostly does whatever Robotnik asks of him, as well as being a yes man of sorts for the evil doctor. Yes, sir. Some might assume that Snively acts the way he does most of the time due to his fear of Robotnik. After all, Snively can often be seen sweating and stuttering in Robotnik's presence, and he sometimes even screams when Robotnik calls for him. However, Snively actually shows quite often that he is fully capable of thinking for himself. In multiple episodes, he demonstrates his mutual distaste for Sonic. In addition to this, anytime Robotnik is away, Snively seems to enjoy taking command a little too much. This should be very interesting. 
Another big example is during the last moments of the final episode. After Robotnik's doomsday machine is destroyed and Robotnik himself retreats, Snively leaves in an escape pod of his own. After re-emerging, Snively cackles, stating that it's now his turn to go up against Sonic and the rest of the Freedom Fighters. He walks off screen, showing that he isn't doing this alone, as a pair of glowing red eyes appear behind him. We will get into who those eyes belong to in a little bit. When it comes to Snively though, there's no denying his own evil intentions. He just didn't get many opportunities to show it due to constantly being in Robotnik's shadow. Speaking of which, our silver medal entry goes to the primary antagonist of the show, Robotnik. It may surprise a few people that Robotnik doesn't get our gold medal of evil here, but after explaining our gold medal entry in a moment, it will hopefully make a little more sense. For Robotnik specifically, we doubt he needs much of an introduction. After all, this is Dr. Freaking Robotnik. Even if this show was your first introduction to him in any way, you wouldn't even have to watch a single moment of any episode to know that Robotnik is bad news. The beginning of the end for the Freedom Fighters. Just watch the video that plays along with the theme song. The lyrics may cover how cool and fast Sonic is, but the visuals show something entirely different. Very quickly, Sonic approaches his friends and then points up at the sky. The camera then pans to show a giant ship approaching that Robotnik is piloting. After the ship passes overhead, the scene transitions to show that Robotnik has turned the area from a thriving forest world into a robotic, dystopian city. When we finally meet Robotnik during the actual show, we only need to hear his sinister, echoing voice to know just how nasty he is. From beginning to end, he is constantly up to no good. From torturing people to enslaving them, he rarely shows any kind of remorse for what he is doing. He is incredibly abusive towards Snively and easily gets upset with him if he fails or steps out of line in any way. We then get to some more specific moments. The episode Sonic Racer shows that he doesn't even need to say or nearly do much of anything to convey just how evil he is. Right near the end of the episode, the lights go out in Robotnik's fortress. Almost immediately, Robotnik's eyes begin to glow in the dark, terrifying Snively even further. In the episode Super Sonic, there is a location known as the Forbidden Zone. It is said that only the most evil can traverse through there to the end. To no one's surprise, Robotnik was able to get through there without much of an issue. What a lovely variety. Granted, Sonic made it through as well, but that was, in large part, due to his super speed. There was also an episode called Sonic Past Cool. During a conversation that Robotnik is having, it is revealed that, aside from the Freedom Fighters and a species known as the Pteropods, Robotnik has roboticized just about everyone on the planet. Putting all these things together, it doesn't seem likely or even possible that anyone could be more evil than him. So who could it possibly be? Our gold medal of evil is going to the Dark Wizard Nogus. Some may be confused by this, particularly since Nogus wasn't in the show for that long, but there are a few points that can be addressed with him. For one, when wanting to explore the Void, he was seen working with Robotnik, which is already not a good sign. After having been in the Void for years, the likes of Sonic, Sally, and Bunny also wound up there. Bringing Sonic there was done intentionally by Nogus, as he discovered that Sonic's speed could get him out of the Void. Since Sally and Bunny got there first, Nogus essentially held them there as prisoners by freezing them in crystal. When he realized that Sonic wasn't willingly going to help him, he disguised himself as Sally's father who was also trapped, and tricked Sonic into getting him out. My magic can do anything. Upon doing so, he froze Sonic temporarily, then let him go back to get his friends while he, quite literally, messed with Robotnik's head as an act of revenge for sealing him away in the void. These acts didn't last long though, as it turns out that Nogus and Sally's father had been in the void for far too long, and their bodies were beginning to crystallize once leaving as a result. This forced both of them to return to the void, as that was the only place Nogus could control it. He may have worked alongside Sonic for a brief moment, but only as a means to an end to get out of the void and find Robotnik, rather than actually becoming allies with the Blue Blur. We are also willing to bet that he was concerned when Sally's dad was beginning to crystallize, only since he was undergoing the same problem. We also want to point out Robotnik and his mindset with Nogus multiple times, even at the sheer sight of Nogus or the simple mentioning of his name, Robotnik instantly goes into a state of panic. When you have a fellow antagonist that even Robotnik of all people is afraid of, you know you have one nasty guy in your hands. Also, remember those glowing red eyes behind Snively in the final episode? For some time, it was uncertain who or what those eyes belonged to, but it turns out they belong to Nogus, who is indicated to be partly roboticized now. Multiple sources have confirmed this, along with information confirming Nogus was originally going to take over as the main antagonist in the cancelled third season, going up against the Freedom Fighters and the like. That's right, Snively's reign, which had only just begun in the series finale, was apparently not going to even be a long-lasting one. 
one. Even if we don't count this extra information since it was never actually made into a third season, we still think that if an evil guy can make someone like Robotnik scared, you know this guy means business. Thankfully though, this is not the end of Sonic Sat AM. As of writing this, a large fan-made project is in the works that aims to continue the story where its official run left off. They even managed to hire Johnny Gielli, Crush 40's vocalist, to sing the theme song in a trailer that has already been released. We don't know if this fan-made web sequel will use what we know of the scrap third season or not, but we're sure it'll be a good time. Working with what we officially have though, we are giving Nogus the gold medal, but we won't blame you if you think Robotnik is more deserving based on what we saw from both of them in the show.